So folks, we're gonna we're beginning ready to start. Anna and uh, Michael are nearby. Black history matters. Brooklyn's not for sale. 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 So thank you everyone for coming. Um, we are very angry at the fact that a historic uh, black landmark is up for demolition. There's been a long battle to so retain the space, to turn it into a museum. And the city has not been respectful of the activists, the family that has wanted to make sure that this becomes a landmark, that children walking up and down this block can go inside and know that this was a stop on the Underground Railroad, that this was a place of black abolitionist activism, and especially as we look around us and see gentrification everywhere, we want to also make it clear that this is a microcosm of what is going on in all of Brooklyn is the displacement and the erasure of black people, of brown people, of low to middle income people, but most important, the culture and the lifeblood of New York City, the diversity of New York City. They're trying to destroy the economic, social, political, linguistic diversity of New York City. That is what gentrification is. And we sell hell no. This monument, this place, this landmark is precious and vital to us. And we will continue to rally. We will continue the legacy of Mama Joy and continue to fight to make sure that this place is not, de not demolished, but more importantly, it is turned into a museum. Yes. 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 That we can look at this as part of the history of black abolitionist movement, but the history of the struggle against racism and white supremacy and the unjust laws we face every single day. And that we are determined to save 22-7 Duffield Street. Without any further ado, I'm going to take um, turn over the rally to our co-chairs. Um, we first have Aaliyah and Michael who are going to introduce themselves and their organizations. They've been in the struggle much longer than Quality for Flatbush has. And they're going to tell you a little bit. And then we're going to hear, as we always do, from all of you. I am going to come around. If you'd like to speak, feel free to speak. We really want to have people that are in line and in tune with our message. We want people to share what they have to say. We encourage from our elders to our youngest folks, come up and say a few words. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for, for being here. My name is Michael Pinkett Jr. I'm the New York organizer for Fury, Delhi's uh, United for Racial and Economic Equality. Can people hear me? Can I, should I speak a little louder? Yes. Okay. yes. All right. So thank you all for coming. My name is Michael. I am the community organizer for Fury, Delhi's United for Racial and Economic Equality. We've been doing work in downtown Brooklyn now for the better part of 15 years. We're right. on the downtown Brooklyn rezoning, and we are here because our work isn't done. Right. When the downtown Brooklyn rezoning was first announced, we were doing work with small business owners and local tenants to make sure that they had a place in this community that they called home. Fifteen years later, most of them are gone, unfortunately. And that's because of the city's direct policy and wishes for downtown Brooklyn to become one of the, one of the country's fastest growing neighborhoods. And unfortunately, when we're talking about how it's grown, People who have moved here have, have been able to afford extremely high rents in the buildings that are around here. Please take a look and look up because that's what downtown Brooklyn is today. So today
today we are here at 227 Duffield because that work isn't finished. In 2007, we were out here trying to fight for this house to be reserved and a, and a number of other buildings on this street. We're talking about the reason why this street is called Abolitionist Place. We were fortunate with the help of one of our former board members, Mama George Patel, to actually fight an eminent domain case to demolish these buildings and demolish this history. And we were successful back then. But what we were successful at that moment was to actually take this and keep it for posterity and turn it into a landmark. And that's why we are here today. We're here today to make sure that 227 Duffield becomes a landmark that's preserved for posterity so that future generations of Brooklynites can really understand, see, take uh, in, okay. and appreciate this history. Right? Black landmarks matter! Black Sale. Not for sale. Not for sale. And on that note, I want to pass on to Aliyah. Okay. Hi, my name is Aliyah Baki Bond. I'm the executive director of CJI, the Circle for Justice Innovation. We're a, we're a fund that is very unusual. We fund grassroots organizations working to transform the criminal justice system. And we do that with activists, donors, grantees, and all of us working together. People who are impacted by the system. We only fund organizations led by uh, by impacted people. And why, you may ask, is that organization here? Well, the reason is because what's very important for us, what we have to remember, is our history. We need to remember that Brooklynites were at the forefront of supporting freedom, that they were at the forefront of putting their lives on the line to ensure that people who were enslaved, whose complete human rights were absolutely denied them, were able to come to freedom. They were supporting that work, not only as people on the Underground Railroad, the Truesdale's Harriet and Thomas Truesdale, who owned this house, but also they were speaking out, they were holding mock uh, 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 auctions at the church nearby. The tunnel, they believed, that was, that's still here in this building, used to go all the way to that church and to other homes on this block. The reason that it's so important for us to remember that is because right now we are facing unjust laws. Right now we have people who are being denied their freedom. Right now we are snatching children from their mother's arms. And so it's really critical for us to remember that we fought this. We, black people in the United States, abolitionists, white people who are abolitionists, Brooklynites, we fought against injustice and we need to recall that. We need to be teaching our children that. We need to be bringing them in here showing them the tunnel that used, to, that used to save people who would otherwise be in the bowels of hell, which is slavery. And so it's critical for us to be part of reminding the people of New York, the people of Brooklyn, the people of this country, the people of the world, that resistance matters and that it changed the course of history. If we don't know our history, then we are doomed to repeat it. Most of you here probably didn't know much about 227 Duffield and the, ha the Truesdells. And what is happening? We are doomed to, to repeat it. It is happening on the border. It is happening in prisons all over this country. That is a legacy of slavery, the same thing these people were fighting against. And so it's critical for us to continue to keep this here. This is the only house left on a block that was named Abolitionist Place. History. Abolitionist Place because it was history. full of homes of people of different races who were working together to end slavery. And we have one house left. We have to fight to maintain it because this, these hotels, and these high, high wow. rent, high rises, these are not going to remind us of who we are and what our collective memory is and what our collective history is and what type of people we want to see. I just want us to recall that there were people who were free who were also snatched by those, 
those folks who were coming up north and taking them back down into slavery. Yes. There were people who had struggled through the Underground Railroad and gotten here, and then they were going to be snatched. And these people said, no, I'm going to use my own home as a place where they can be, find harbor, where they can find safety, where they can, they can find freedom for their families. And so I think that that is something that's critical for us to remember. That's something that's critical for us to remind each and every one of us about. And that's something that I'm sure, were this a museum, we would be bringing our children to see. And people who would come to the city would be fascinated to learn that this was a beacon of freedom in this country, a beacon of freedom in New York City. And so that's why we're here, because they're trying to erase our history. And when they erase your history, they erase who you are. They erase who you are. And so it's critical for us to remember that history. Um, I, I also wanted to be really, really clear. All we need is the Landmark Preservation Commission to put a day on the calendar and say we're going to look into the history of this place. That's all we need for them to stop the demolition of this building. That's all we need. And so if you have not yet done so, please sign the petition, which will be taken to the Executive Director of the Landmark Preservation Commission. And if you have not done, or done so already, call up the Landmark Preservation Commission because they're not used to receiving the types of responses that we've been generating with regard to the preservation of a building in Brooklyn. And so we can make it happen. We can make it happen. The reason we're even in this position is because the city held a very shady, shady process some years ago under the Bloomberg administration. And they hired a firm that was supposed to look into the history of this building. And what happened is the firm testified before the city council and lied. They said, oh, we spoke to this historian, that historian, and the other historian, and they all said, no, it doesn't have any historical significance. The only problem is, the next thing you know, all those historians came forward and said they never talked to us. The people who own the house said they never came and saw the tunnel, they never came and saw about the history of this place. If that is the type of process that's going to be determining what happens in our city, and we leave it alone, Basically, what we're saying is, unlike the people of Puerto Rico who said, no, you cannot, you cannot uh, continue to, to, to abuse us and talk about us and laugh about our history and can remain governor, unlike them, we're going to say, we will not take it. We will not take it. We will have a real, a fair, and a just process to look into the history of this building. Because if we don't, I came out of the subway this evening and I, I walk up this block and it's, I haven't been here, I haven't been here in, in a couple of years, like more than three years. I was over by Gold Street because I led an effort to get Gold Street co-named after Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells actually lived on Gold Street for three years after the Clutch Klan burned down her newspaper pieces when she led the fight against lynching. This part of Brooklyn was an area of Brooklyn that holds so much history. And I, I walked this evening up this block and I'm looking around and I'm looking and I'm like, holy flank, look at all of these glass and steel towers. This whole block was small buildings that dated from the 1830s and the 1840s. And these two blocks, these two blocks, this was a community of abolitionists. Just about everybody that lived on these two blocks, they were abolitionists. I want you to think about it. Underground Railroad activity in the 1840s and the 1830s and the 1850s, it was illegal. 
it was illegal to help blacks escape to freedom, even here in New York City. And we still ain't free. And, and for a big part of the 1830s, the chief of the criminal justice system, the court system in New York City, his name was Richard Riker. He was the chief magistrate. He was the center of a web of bounty hunting rings that were kidnapping the children of free black families. And, and he would issue, under the Fugitive Slave Act, he would issue certificates of removal so that the bounty hunters could legally remove these children from New York State and sell them down to Alabama and Mississippi down to the slaveocracy. They had a whole big thing under EDC and the Bloomberg administration and this really happened. They wanted to expand, and now you can see what, what happened. They did. They expanded Metrotech. This was a real estate steamroll, a real estate development steamroll.